Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, let me tell you about the latest special from Mike Lindell at MyPillow. The standard MyPillow, normally $49.98 for a limited time only, just $14.88 with promo code JOEY. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio listener specials, and see all the specials. There's a limited quantity of just 10 at this special price. That's $14.88 with promo code JOEY. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. A new CBS poll finds overwhelming support for President Donald J. Trump's transition and agenda ahead of his inauguration in January. We kind of knew that, didn't we? Uh, Is the DEI empire on the brink of collapse? State lawmakers and companies prepare to roll back this woke agenda with the anticipation of Trump 2.0. An illegal immigrant with a shocking criminal record was arrested for a brutal attack in Virginia, leaving law enforcement officials asking, how does this happen? And a small town in South Carolina is completely without a police force after its entire department, including the chief of police, resigned. We have all the details, that and much more, on today's show. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills. (laughs) But I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. It was a pretty busy news weekend as we're preparing for a somewhat short week with Thanksgiving on Thursday. Uh, President Trump's cabinet picks sparked heated debates uh, as they carried over into the weekend. Democrats calling out ethical concerns. They promising resistance. So what's next? Uh, The political buzz is all about President-elect Trump's bold cabinet selections and the controversies that uh, have stirred up on Capitol Hill. Left some of the Democrats sort of scratching their head from Matt Gaetz withdrawing as Attorney General nominee to fiery responses over Pentagon and DOJ picks. It's clear that the stakes couldn't be higher as Trump reshapes his administration for the battles coming up over the next four years. Speaker Mike Johnson said yesterday he hasn't talked to President-elect Trump about releasing the House House Ethics Committee report on Matt Gates, with Gates' nomination for Attorney General now withdrawn. Questions uh, are still out there. Uh, Democrats wanting answers, uh, and and whether or not the report could still impact his political future. Speaker Johnson was clear he's keeping his focus on the House and not on President Trump's picks. Uh, President-elect Trump's choice of Pete Hegseth to lead the Pentagon is stirring up tensions very similar to what Matt Gaetz was facing. Uh, Senator-elect Reuben Gallagher says he's giving Hexeth the opportunity to explain past controversial comments while others are warning about the potential politicization of the military. Uh, Senator Ron Johnson was very candid about his stance on Trump's nominee, saying that his bias is to vote for whoever President-elect Donald Trump wants. He says this loyalty signals smooth sailing for many of the Trump picks, but Democrats like Senator Alex Padillo are promising to do whatever it takes to challenge the controversial choices. Uh, Not so for uh, Democrat Senator John Fetterman. He admitted that Trump is stronger than he's been in the past three cycles as he prepares for his second term. Love him or hate him, even his opponents acknowledge that President Trump's dominance in the current political landscape is something to be reckoned with, and John Fetterman seems to recognize that. Too bad his other Democrat colleagues in the U.S. Senate can't quite get that message. Senator-elect Elisa uh, Slotkin expressed concerns about the potential politicization of the military as Trump's pick, like Hexeth, head to confirmation. It's a sentiment echoed by congressional Democrats who say that they are going to have a showdown over the future of these uh, key federal departments. Uh, Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich praised Trump's unconventional cabinet pick, saying that the Pentagon needs a complete overhaul and has applauded Trump for shaking up the status quo. Gingrich's comments underscore the broader theme of this transition. Uh, Trump 2.0 is aiming to disrupt Washington in a big way. So as President Donald Trump moves full steam ahead to uh, build his cabinet, reshuffle government, The battle lines are being drawn in Washington, D.C. Will his pick survive the confirmation process? It's going to be interesting to watch, folks. And what does it mean for the future of the DOJ, for example, and the Pentagon and beyond? One thing we do know, the American people 
still haven't forgotten why they overwhelmingly chose Donald Trump. If you're sitting at your family's Thanksgiving table on Thursday and your favorite Uncle Frank is still wearing his Kamala Harris T-shirt and tries to convince the family that Americans really didn't give Trump a mandate, refer him to the new CBS News poll, which finds overwhelming support for President Trump's transition and his agenda come his inauguration in January. The results are aligned with other recent polls, which also found wide backing of his performance. More Americans than not approve of President Trump's top cabinet nominee so far. According to CBS, Americans overwhelmingly back President Trump's performance during the transition. In fact, nearly 6 in 10 Americans say they approve of how President Trump has handled his job performance as president-elect since November the 5th. Americans support Trump's plan for mass deportation. The policy is backed by most independent voters and strong majorities of voters across every age group, in line with some of the most recent polls, which have consistently shown a majority of Americans support this signature Trump policy. They're tired of open borders. They're tired of having to compete with resources with people from other countries. Most Americans uh, also in, uh, favor imposing tariffs on imported goods. Th- this widely prop- uh, supported program is a key cornerstone of Donald Trump's Made in America agenda. And a plurality of Americans say that President Trump will make food and grocery prices go down. He, uh, of course, takes office January 20th with this unprecedented mandate after his resounding electoral college and popular vote wins and as I've said many times before, now the hard part starts. Uh, Congressman Marjorie Taylor Greene is leading the charge to cut some of that government waste as she is chair of a new subcommittee working alongside the Department of Government Efficiency, DOGE, uh, now headed by Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy. Greene outlined her vision on Sunday Morning Futures yesterday, targeting sanctuary cities and states as one of her top priorities. She wants her leaders to explain why they deserve federal funding while harboring illegal immigrants. Ms. Green pointed to the tragic case of Lake and Riley, a 22-year-old nursing student murdered by a Venezuelan illegal immigrant in her, in her home state of Georgia as an example of the cost of failed immigration policies, and she wants these governors and these mayors to be accountable. I'd like to talk to the governors of sanctuary states and the mayors of sanctuary cities and have them come before our committee and explain why they deserve federal dollars if they're going to harbor illegal criminal aliens in their states and their cities. We're going to look in every single aspect, um, and we don't care about people's feelings. We're going to be searching for the facts, and we're going to be verifying if this is worth spending the American hard-earned, uh, American people's hard-earned tax dollars on. Well, these are all very important issues that, that you raise. I want to ask you about some of those government contracts. Beyond immigration, Green says her committee will tackle a wide range of wasteful spending. She's targeting government-funded media like NPR, which she called a mouthpiece for Democrat propaganda. Uh, she wants to look at outdated federal programs and even remote government workers. She criticized billions being spent on federal buildings that remain empty while employees stay home post-pandemic. It's all over. Every single government department program, grant programs, contracts, it is everywhere. And so when we look into a deep dive into this massive problem that's caused America to be $36 trillion in debt, we're going to have to go into all kinds of buckets. And that's how I'll be separating things on the oversight subcommittee on DOGE. We'll be looking at everything from government-funded media programs like NPR that spread nothing but Democrat propaganda. We'll be going into grant programs that fund things like sex apps in Malaysia, uh, toilets in Africa, all kinds of programs that don't help the American people. I want to talk to the people at the Pentagon and ask them why they can't find billions of dollars every single year and why they fail their audit. I've said before just how exciting it is to think about what Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy will do in sniffing out government waste. Now you add Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene to that mix, and boy, this really gets exciting. Greene didn't mince words at all, saying she said, we don't care about people's feelings. We're going to find the facts and stop wasting the American people's hard-earned tax dollars. Now, doesn't that encourage you to know that they're going to really look at places 
that have been uh, untouchable in the past and that they're going to root out some of the waste that we know is there. Folks, this is exactly the kind of accountability we need in Washington. Uh, And believe me, it's going to make the next few years fun to watch as they dive in to some of these, these wasteful spending programs. I mean, she talked about, uh, you know, the NPR, for example. You and I both know that NPR has really been a mouthpiece for the Democrat Party. And you and I have been paying for it. They have advantages that commercial radio stations don't have. And when she talks about stopping federal funding of some of these sanctuary cities and sanctuary states, you know, many of you have texted and emailed me. You've asked that question with some of these, like, like Los Angeles just last week, overwhelmingly supporting a resolution to name Los Angeles officially Sanctuary City. Many of you email me and text me and say, well, why can't we just stop their federal funding? Well, Marjorie Taylor Greene, she's listening because she agrees. Just stop their funding. They may change their attitude. This is going to get very interesting, folks. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. That's 864-477-5639. Email's always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. This year, I really thought I was going to have to boycott the holidays. I was going to lock myself away and not come out until 2025. But after finding PhD weight loss, you can bet I'll be at every holiday party I'm invited to. That's because PhD weight loss helped me take control with great confidence, support, and my new healthy body. The best part? PhD weight loss did it all without harmful drugs that keep you dependent on them to maintain your weight loss. It's a natural, medication-free approach to weight loss crafted to naturally diminish food-related thoughts, hunger, and cravings, making your weight loss journey more sustainable and enjoyable. Take it from me, I lost 33 pounds. The PhD Weight Loss Program teaches you not just what to eat and when, but also how to think differently about food and finally let go of those cravings and get rid of the hunger naturally. Don't lock yourself away this holiday season. Call PhD Weight Loss today at 864-644-1900. That's 864-644-1900 or go to myphdweightloss.com. Small town in South Carolina is completely without police after its entire department, including the chief of police, resigned over the weekend. Uh, McColl, South Carolina is now relying on nearby law enforcement agencies just to maintain basic public safety. The resignations led by Chief Bob Hale were reportedly due to a hostile work environment and repeated harassment by a member of the town council. In a public statement, Chief Hale said these personal attacks made it impossible to do his job. He said that the council of, uh, accused the council of slashing the police department's already strained budget. Chief Hale said that funding requests for modern equipment, training, and staffing were ignored, leaving officers unable to to serve the community effectively. So they got the city's attention, and they walked off. Uh, Hale did mince words, saying, the safety of residents and the well-being of officers should have been prioritized. He added that his decision to step down was made to shed light on what he called the toxic atmosphere created by the town leadership. Residents, of course, are very concerned. One local William Groom said, if someone gets stabbed or shot, we're talking 10 to 15 minutes for sheriff's deputies to respond. That's enough time for someone to lose their life. For now, the Marble County Sheriff's Office and state law enforcement are stepping in. But McCall's mayor, George Garner, admits that they're in a difficult situation. I would say you are, mayor. Uh, the town is now scrambling to hire a new police chief and rebuild the department from scratch. Now, you tell me, who wants to take over that job after the entire department left? Uh, this isn't an isolated issue either. Uh, just, just last month, the entire police force in Gary, Oklahoma, resigned for similar reasons, citing political leaders failing to meet their needs. Folks, uh, this is what happens when leadership fails and communities are left vulnerable. I I can't imagine a a town uh, like that just losing their entire police force. And based on the story that I read, it wasn't a surprise. The the chief and some of the the police officers have been telling the town council for a while now, they had issues, and they and the town council, I guess, thought, well, they have nowhere to go. You know, they're they're at our mercy. Well, guess who's at whom's mercy now? So, I've got a question for you. You know, you and I have talked about 
Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, DEI, for a few years now during the the Biden-Harris administration. State lawmakers and companies appear to be preparing to roll back this woke agenda with Trump 2.0. The, uh, these policies have infiltrated just about every corner of our life, from large companies to military to public universities. And as the incoming Trump administration literally is targeting, setting its sights on dismantling this multi-billion dollar woke enterprise, uh, we're going to see a fight, but I think it's one that we can win. Under the Biden administration, DEI policies flourished. They, they embedded in everything from federal hiring practice to corporate boardrooms. But now state lawmakers and, and Republicans, uh, uh, Republican attorneys general are gearing up to take on what they call a far-left ideological orthodoxy. Attorney Devin Westhill put it bluntly, calling DEI a system more interested in racial quotas than diversity of thought. And with Republican-led states in the driver's seat, expect a full-scale assault on this divisive agenda. Uh, Last week, House lawmakers debated a bill to roll back DEI initiatives. The hearings got fiery with uh, Representative Jasmine Crockett, a Texas Democrat. I shared that with you Friday, I believe it was making headlines for a very heated exchange where she claimed that there's been no oppression for the white man in this country. Her comments underscore just how polarizing this issue has become. She blamed everything on the white man. If you missed that, go back and listen to uh, Friday's Friday's episode. Uh, Over the last few years, major corporations have fallen for this. Target, Google, Bank of America, they, they all jumped on board the DEI bandwagon. Uh, And a lot of it had to do with the pressure from the Biden administration. But now you've had these red state attorneys general who are preparing lawsuits targeting companies for alleged hiring practices based on racial quotas. You have consumer advocates arguing that DEI policies have distracted companies from focusing on the quality of goods and services and hurting everyday Americans in the process and driving prices up at the same time. The uh, DEI movement is also intertwined with this ESG, the environmental, social, and government benchmarks that have influenced everything from investments to pension funds. Iowa Attorney General Brenna Byrd warned that these woke policies are putting Americans' retirement savings at risk as well. She said no one's life savings should be gambled for woke goals. She said pledging to protect pensioners from political social engineering is her job. And this is a fight that is not new to Donald Trump. In his first term, he banned divisive training for federal contractors. Uh, Now with the renewed Republican momentum, I think we're going to see an even broader push to roll back this nonsense, to roll back DEI initiatives across the federal government. Get a, wipe them out of universities and private industry. These companies, I think, are going to be given permission to abandon this, and none too soon. As Trump himself might say, the goal is put America first, not the woke agenda. So I go back to my original question. You think this is the beginning of the end for DEI? Will we be able to wipe this out and undo what has what has happened, particularly over the last four years? Will we be able to to wipe it out of corporate boardrooms, wipe it off of college campuses? Will the states and Trump be able to dismantle this multi-billion dollar empire? I think we can. And, and I think that Donald Trump and some of the people that he's selecting will not give up until they do, which is only going to make your life easier, my life easier. This this will benefit every single American to get this nonsense out of our schools, out of uh, your, your company, and particularly out of your pension fund. I mean, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris took this to an extreme. And I think Donald Trump and his administration will take the dismantling to another extreme. You agree? Is it time for all of this stuff to be gone, to wipe it out? 
send me a quick text. Email me, joey at joeyhudson.com. Is there anything that we can say that we actually benefited from because of diversity, equity, inclusion? Is there anything that we benefited from because of ESG? Text me, email me, joey at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you can, you can trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, either way, if you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single tra- transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman. They do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done. And you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at Furman Ford. It doesn't even have to be a Ford. They, they service all makes and models. Visit my friends at Furman Ford online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. Some Democrats in Congress are still posturing to oppose President-elect Trump's plan to close the border and orchestrate a massive deportation program of the illegals who are already here. Uh, And they're going to start with some of the most violent criminals. It's getting harder, though, for some of these Democrats to justify the opposition that they're putting up and, and claim they will in the new Congress. An illegal immigrant with a shocking criminal record was arrested for a brutal attack in Virginia. Did you hear this story? And are you asking, like a lot of people, how did this happen? A tragic and infuriating story out of Virginia where an illegal immigrant with a lengthy criminal history was arrested for attempting to kidnap and rape a woman on a public trail. This just days after being released from jail. They turned the guy loose and he tries to kidnap and rape this woman. This is a prime example of the failed policies of reckless decisions and the lives that have been put at, uh, at risk because of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Here's the story. Police in Herndon, Virginia arrested Dennis Humberto Navarrete Romero a 31-year-old illegal immigrant from Honduras after he allegedly abducted and assaulted a woman on the W and OD trail. The victim thankfully managed to fight him off and to be able to seek help. Romero was apprehended shortly after the attack and now faces charges of abduction with intent to defile and rape. Look, I'm saying that this guy probably has picked the wrong time to assault an American. Because I think that he could be a nice poster boy for one of the first to deport, to send him back, send him back to Honduras. Uh, But now here's where it gets even worse. Romero has a documented history of sexual assaults and other crimes dating back to 2022. Weapons charges, auto theft, indecent exposure, sexual assault, you name it. Time after time, Romero has been arrested and released with charges reduced to lesser offenses. Now, what judge in his or her right mind would turn this, this guy loose and, 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 and reduce the charges? This is what's wrong with our, our criminal justice uh, system as it relates to illegal aliens. Now this woman has suffered because of this failure. She should hold Joe Biden and Kamala Harris responsible directly. There should be some way that we can hold Joe Biden responsible for what he has done to our country. Do a class action lawsuit against him. Keep him tied up in court for the rest of his life. Am I too extreme here? Does it frustrate you? and anger you to think about what that dummy 
has done to our country. Herndon Police Chief Maggie DeBoard didn't miss Mint's words saying, what is disturbing is the number of times this individual has been arrested and released. Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin called out local officials blaming their reckless decisions for allowing Romero to remain on the streets. Youngkin promised, Youngkin promised that when President Trump takes office, sanctuary policies will end and localities will cooperate with ICE to keep communities safe. And this is an example of where Marjorie Taylor Greene, when she's questioning uh, federal funding for cities like this and for states like this, this is where that comes into play. And this case isn't isolated. It's, it's a symptom of a broken system. You and I know that. I'm preaching to the choir, I know. Uh, local prosecutors lowering charges, ICE unable to act due to sanctuary policies, and a revolving door of arrest and releases. It's a recipe for disaster, and innocent people are paying the price. Innocent Americans are paying the price, but that's going to stop come January 20th. Wake up. Again, I, I hope this guy, Romero, I hope that Trump has written his name down and makes an example out of him. Trump should, on January the 20th, put him on a plane and fly his dumb, you know what, his dumb butt back to Honduras in shackles. Romero is being uh, presently held without bond at Fairfax County Adult Detention Center. Police believe that there could be other victims, unfortunately. They're urging anyone with information to come forward. Meanwhile, questions are, uh, linger. How many preventable tragedies like this are out there and waiting to happen? And this is why Donald Trump is saying he's going to target the, the, the worst of the worst first. I mean, I mean, this is about safety. This is about justice. This is about common sense. You know, it's no secret that the issue of illegal Im uh, immigration uh, and, and open borders by the Biden-Harris administration was one of the main reasons that Kamala Harris uh, lost so badly on November the 5th. And it's fun to watch as the Democrats are blaming everyone but themselves. It, it's led to a post-election blame game. Uh, from Adam Schiff to Nancy Pelosi to Bernie Sanders, they're all finger-pointing, and it is hilarious to watch. Adam Schiff, over the weekend, he was on Meet the Press yesterday, the uh, California senator-elect, which is that just irritates me to no end that California is sending this guy to the U.S. Senate. We're going we're gonna to be stuck with him for the next six years. Um, but he admitted, I'll have to give... Shifty Schiff, credit, he admitted that the Democrat Party itself, including himself, he said, bears the responsibility for Kamala Harris's defeat. Schiff acknowledged that Democrats were seen as the status quo in an anti-incumbent wave. He, he pointed to the economic struggles that the average American has experienced over the past four years. I want to turn now to the results of the 2024 election and, and talk a little bit about what you think may have gone wrong. You joined this program a month before the election and you talked about Vice President Harris's chances of winning. Take a look at this. By the standards of today, I think she can win overwhelmingly, uh, you know, given how divided the country is. Overwhelming may be winning by 100,000 votes or 80,000 votes in these key battleground states. I think that's within her capacity to do. So I think we are well poised to win this thing. But uh, it is still scary close. Why do you think that Kamala Harris didn't win and win overwhelmingly? Well, I think Joe Biden's decision to step aside and pass the torch was the right decision. It gave us a chance to win. It didn't give us a guarantee. Uh, and I thought she could win. Uh, and I thought she could win in all the battleground states. But ultimately, what we saw both in this country and around the world was a very strong anti-incumbent wave that took out both progressives and conservatives uh, and our party became associated with the status quo, uh, and that was too much to overcome. I think the principal issue uh, is the economy, uh, and over years and even decades, it's gotten more and more difficult for people working full-time to make a living. Uh, and until we resolve that challenge to the economy, we may find the presidency is easier to get than it is to keep. 
Schiff went on to say that his party holds the responsibility of being out of touch with the American people, saying the Democrats need to put together a bold vision of the future, a vision that the American people will trust will benefit their future. Um, but I do think the you know Democratic Party has to recognize the challenge we have, which is for too many millions of uh, battleground voters, working people, they don't think we represent them. Uh, and we have to make that case anew. But Senator-elect, do you believe that President Biden bears some responsibility for staying in too long? Uh, look, I think uh, the, the entire Democratic Party bears a responsibility, myself included, and the former president, and the, uh, uh, mounted a, an effective campaign, and you have to give him credit for that. But uh, the challenge that we have is we need to put forward a bold vision for how we're going to move the economy forward, make the economy work for every American. To me, the existential question is, if you're working hard in America, can you still earn a good living? And too many people doubt that that's possible. You think he really understands why his party lost so miserably? Uh, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi has her own take. Uh, she blames President Biden for staying in the race too long. According to Pelosi, Biden's late exit hurt Harris's ability to mount a strong campaign and overshadowed her with doubts about his leadership. Uh, this is just one of the many internal battles breaking out among Democrats. You know, I wonder what Pelosi thinks about Kamala Harris, though, spending a billion dollars and not doing any better than she, than, than she did. How does she explain that? Bernie Sanders, uh, he, he had harsh words for his own party, too, accusing Democrats of abandoning the working class, which they have. Uh, Sanders warned for years that Democrats shift towards progressive ideologies and away from blue-collar voters would backfire, and he says, I told you so. Is he right? I think old Bernie's probably on to something, don't you? And then there's the shadow of Barack Obama. Reports say that Obama worked behind the scenes to push Joe Biden out of the race over the summer, but his involvement came too late to save Harris. Some insiders blame him for not acting sooner to steady the party. Even Democrats now admit that their leadership was in chaos heading into the election. Finally, there's the elephant, or maybe we should say the donkey in the room, the Democrats' embrace of the far-left woke ideology. Pundits and, and voters alike are saying that this shift alienated middle-class, blue-collar Americans who used to be the backbone of the Democrat Party. From the economy to cultural issues, voters clearly felt the party no longer represents their values. So where do Democrats go from here? Can they rebuild with voters, or is this a defeat that starts a long road back to relevance? Can the Democrat Party ever be relevant again? That's my question to you. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. That's 864-477-5639. Email's always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, you're totally remodeling the kitchen when it's time to get those new appliances, when you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 11,000 square feet and 1,500 appliances at any, any given time, you can buy today and use today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse in Pickens. It's worth the short drive over to Pickens. Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team over there, they'll take good care of you. They have an award-winning service department, expert installation, extended warranties, and a discounted appliance warehouse. They treat you like family. You're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there. Discounted appliance warehouse. They're proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor. You owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance to head over to Pickens to discounted appliance warehouse online at dawpickens.com. DAWPickens.com. One more thing before I leave the topic of the Democrats pointing fingers. Uh, Congressman Daryl Issa, he's the Republican, one of those, uh, just a few Republicans from California. He's calling out Secretary of State Antony Blinken over reports that the State Department held taxpayer funded therapy sessions for employees who were upset about President elect Trump's victory. <laughs> According to the Free Beacon, these sessions included what one source called an information cry session and a webinar offering stress management tips to help employees navigate challenging times. Challenging times. Well, folks, 
we're talking about the normal lawful outcome of a of an election and these people have to have therapy isa didn't hold back calling these sessions disturbing and saying that they raise serious questions about whether state department staff are ready to implement president-elect trump's foreign policy agenda he pointed out that if federal employees can't handle the results of an election they should step aside and let others do the job and hey this is where elon musk and vivek ramasamy uh, comes in maybe they need to clean house in the state department start with them isa's letter to Anthony Blinken also questioned how many sessions were held, how much they cost taxpayers, and whether more are planned. <laughs> he, he didn't mince words. He added that nonpartisan government officials shouldn't need mental health counseling just because Kamala Harris didn't win. Folks, th- this is like the twilight zone, knowing that our federal tax dollars was used for therapy sessions for Democrats because they lost. The American people elected Trump in a clear mandate for major changes in foreign policy. If some of the the, the Democrat bureaucrats can't accept that, I think it's time for them to start looking for another line of work. Don't you? Did you happen to see over the weekend the story about Elon Musk and Joe Rogan? They they were joking about the shakeup of the media world over at MSNBC. And Musk jokingly talked about maybe buying the, the network because they're in they're in trouble over there. The, the liberal news network might be on the aux, auction block soon. And as its parent company, Comcast, just announced plans to spin it off along with other NBC Universal cable networks, it could be for sale. Now, wouldn't that be something? Musk sparked the buzz on Friday when he posted on X about buying MSNBC and turning it into a conservative outlet. He even joked about firing Rachel Maddow for fun and using the network to showcase top stories from X. Rogan chimed in, offering to replace Maddow while adopting her signature style, saying, I will wear the same outfit and glasses and tell the same lies. (laughs) Musk responded, deal. Uh, These these two guys are just having fun. Uh, Conservatives are are having a, a ball with it. Comedian Tim Young uh, pleaded, please, God, make this happen. Author Jim Hansen added, can you imagine the freak out on the left? Elon could do this on a whim. And that's the crazy thing, and that's what the, that's what is so scary for MSNBC. They know he can. It is no secret that MSNBC has been struggling. Maddow's ratings have plummeted since Donald Trump's election victory with her losing nearly half of her audience. She averaged 1.4 million viewers before the election, just uh, and just 118,000 in key demographic sense, that is a 50% drop. Now, whether Musk and Rogan are serious or they're just having fun, <laughs> uh, who knows? The uh, uh, MSNBC really could become a conservative outlet if Elon Musk decided he wanted to put a network in his portfolio. Speaking of jobs and where people are going to land, uh, former Congressman Matt Gates has swapped Capitol Hill for Cameo. You know, many of you have said, well, where does where does Gates go from here? Uh, some have asked, can he go back to the House? Uh, no, he can't. He, he resigned. Uh, uh, so, I, I, in theory, I guess he could run in the, in the special election. But as it stands now, Matt Gates can't just change his mind and say, I want to go back to the House. Uh, what he is doing, he made the announcement on Friday that... Uh, <laughs> He is going to be on Cameo, and I've never heard of Cameo. Maybe you have. Evidently, Cameo is a place that you can uh, get famous people to record birthday wishes, advice, and, and just whatever you want them to record. His Cameo profile says that for a $525 price tag, he will record messages of whatever you want. Gates' bio highlights his time in Congress, noting once I fired the House Speaker, referencing his role, of course, of removing Kevin McCarthy. And, of course, there's still a lot of talk on Capitol Hill, primarily from the Democrats, on whether or not that House Ethics Committee probe into allegations of misconduct by Gates will be released to the public. Who knows? Would you give 525 bucks? 
to have Matt Gates maybe record a birthday greeting or something for you? Is that something that interests you? Uh, President-elect Donald Trump turning to familiar faces as he continues to build his new administration, and, and I'm particularly proud of one of his latest ones announced over the weekend, and that is Sebastian Gorka, my friend and colleague. Uh, he's a longtime Trump ally. He's going to be returning to the White House as deputy assistant to the president and senior director for counterterrorism, and it couldn't come for a better person. I, I just Sebastian Gorka is one of my favorite people. And I'm so happy for him and so proud for him. I hate that we're going to lose him on the radio. He will take a leave of absence. Maybe he'll return to the radio after he finishes his work in Trump 2.0. But uh, Sebastian Gorka returning to the White House. Uh, joining Gorka is Alex Wong, another alumnus of the first Trump term who will serve as assistant to the president and principal deputy national security advisor. Wong previously handled North Korea policy and East Asian affairs for the Trump State Department. On the cabinet front, uh, Trump nominated Scott Turner to lead the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Turner is a former NFL player, served as executive director of the White House Opportunity and Revitalization Council during Trump's first administration. His nomination will need Senate confirmation, uh, but with a GOP-controlled chamber, hopefully that's not going to be a problem. Uh, These picks highlight Trump's strategy of, of really leaning on a lot of people who are loyal to him, uh, seasoned veterans from his first term in office, and uh, and kind of getting the band back together. Uh, speaking of uh, of getting the band back together, uh, President Joe Biden hosted what some are calling a farewell dinner at the White House over the weekend. It was a black tie event on the South Lawn to thank Democrat donors and insiders for their support as his presidency winds down. Uh, in, uh, in classic Biden fashion, he opened with a joke telling attendees, don't jump in the pool. Uh, not everyone was in a laughing mood, according to <laughs> reports there. Many insiders are reportedly furious about the Democrats' poor showing, of course, where uh, Trump decisively won. Uh, one donor who skipped the event told reporters it felt like a loser's party, pointing to the staggering $1.5 billion spent on a failed campaign. The uh, guest list included Biden's cabinet members, big-name donors, ambassadors. Some described the event as bittersweet, part love fast, part last hurrah. There were musical performances, heartfelt praise from uh, from Biden for his wife, First Lady Jill Biden, but no mention of Trump or the election outcome. Uh, some attendees expressed their appreciation for Biden. Uh, there was a clear frustration in the air, too, according to some who were there. Uh, the Democrat Party... Uh, All of them, again, questioning what went wrong. And with Trump's victory now shaping the country's future, the dinner may be remembered as Joe Biden's closing chapter. (laughs) Can can you imagine if you are one of these uh, millionaires or billionaires and and you spent, you you donated a large portion of of money only to see it squandered? I mean, who, who spends a billion and a half dollars to lose? Wow. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss Studios. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined my mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, join me on my YouTube channel. Be sure and like, comment, and subscribe. Just search for Joey Hudson. As always, thanks for spending a few minutes of your day with me. Do me a favor and forward this episode to a few friends. Just click on the share button and send to your contacts. We need to build an army of conservatives to win our country back, and we can do that by continuing to share the truth with our friends and family. Keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text on 864-477-JOEY. Email to joey at joeyhudson.com, and I love your messages on the MyPillow message line. Again, that's 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Be sure and take advantage of the MyPillow special, just fourteen eighty eight on the standard MyPillows when you use promo code JOEY. Order online at MyPillow.com or call 800-893-4053. We're back again tomorrow and hope you'll plan to join us. Until then, remember, God's got this. He's still in control.